All right, so let's have a look at something very interesting, the human eye. But let's do things a little bit differently this time. Instead of starting with the structures of the eye and its functions, let's look into how and why the pupil size changes in different light intensities. Okay, so what happens is the amount of light entering the eye is controlled by altering the size of the pupil. For instance, circular iris muscle, in bright light these muscles contract and the radial muscles relax. This reduces the diameter of the pupil, allowing less light to enter the eye. Now, high light intensity can damage the retina, so this reaction kind of has a protective function. And in dim light, the complete opposite happens. The circular iris muscles relax while the radial muscles contract. This increases the diameter of the pupil, allowing more light to enter. Okay, so now let's get into the different structures of the eye and its functions. Alrighty, so number one is the sclera. The sclera is the tough outer coating of the eyeball, or more conveniently, the white part of the eye. Number two is the cornea. Cornea is the transparent curved layer which allows light to enter as it is transparent. Number three is the vitreous humor. The vitreous humor is a jelly-like liquid behind the lens which maintains the shape of the eyeball. Number four is the aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is a transparent watery liquid in front of the lens while the vitreous humor is behind the lens. Number five is the lens itself, which is a transparent structure, well, obviously. Well, what it does is it focuses the light onto the retina. Number six is the suspensory ligaments. These are the structures that hold the lens in place while the lens focuses light onto the retina. Number seven is the ciliary muscle. It is a muscle that helps the lens to change its shape, which helps it to focus the light onto the retina. Number eight is the iris which is a pigmented structure which contains radial and ciliary iris muscles that helps in regulating the amount of light entering the eye. Number nine is the pupil. I guess you all know that it is a round hole at the center of the iris through which light enters. What you may not know, however, is that it appears black. Well, it appears black because the black choroid layer is visible through the pupil. That's why. Number 10 is the choroid layer. It is the middle layer with black pigments and, and reduces the reflections inside the eye and also contains blood vessels which helps to nourish the cells of the retina. Number 11 is the retina, which is the inner lining at the back of the eye. It contains the light sensitive cells, rods and cones which actually give color to the image. Number 12 is the yellow spot or the fovea. This area has the highest density of cones and thus offers maximum sharpness but only works at full efficiency in bright light. Number 13 is the optic nerve. It is made up of nerve fibers which carry nerve impulses from the eye to the brain. Number 14 is the blind spot. It is at the exit point of the optic nerve and so there are no light sensitive cells and therefore light falling on this region will not be detected. Those guys are the functions of all the different structures of the eye. Do you know how the eye produces a focused image? Don't worry, I'll tell you all about it. First, the light rays from an object enters the transparent cornea and then its curved surface. And the curved surface of the lens together bends or refracts the light rays. Then the lens, being elastic, makes some adjustments to focus the image on the retina. The retina contains light sensitive cells, rods, that work well under dim light and cones which bring color to the image focused on the retina. What happens is these light sensitive cells are stimulated by the light of the image so it converts the light energy into electrical energy. This electrical energy in the form of an impulse travels along the optic nerve to the brain and the brain finally decodes the impulse to actually produce the sense of the sight. So folks that's where it's at. I guess that's enough for the eye lesson for now. Hope you learned something very valuable from this lesson. And of course, if you have any doubts, I hope they have been clarified now.